sunny afternoon everybody and uh, i think so our session was more related to epc and operation and maintenance but as of now most of my panelists have spoken more about uh, operation and maintenance performance management asset management so maybe i'll just highlight about the issues uh, related to the epc side uh, of the business actually as well as the developer side of the business also uh, my name is amit barve been associated with the solar industry for last 14 years uh, started my career uh, in solar industry when it was very nascent stage. Uh, coming all the way for 14 years, I still wonder whether it's a time to smile or it's st still time to see that uh, why do I join this industry? Because there are always a mixed feeling. The, day, uh, the years when I started uh, working in an industry uh, was a very small, uh, more off-grid centered and uh, there was no scaling up of the business's concern. We used to sell the systems in few kilowatts actually. And that was a big thing if you sell something in kilowatts. And the average price at what we were selling was like 350 rupees per watt peak as a system price. 250 rupees per watt peak was the module price. And it was more of a seller's market. Uh, if you are able to afford, you have it or there is nothing for you. Yeah, today the situation has changed. Uh, we don't need any further efforts to go to the industry and try to convince them why solar works, how solar works and why today it is economically feasible uh, to add up to the solar solution. So there are a couple of good things which are happening in the industry. Uh, the really sector has moved ahead. We know by now uh, the installation base has gone close to 12 gigawatt, uh, which is a huge, huge chunk than what we were talking about kilowatts in installations till early 1990 or even early 2000 before the National Solar Mission started into the picture. Uh, over the period of last three to four years, uh, government has also recognized a lot of issues in terms of scaling up of the business is concerned. The major business what has been done or the installation base has happened is onto the ground mounted systems and land acquisition was the major pain as far as developers were concerned and there the government chipped in with the help of coming with the concept of solar park so that the pain points related to the developers are really taken over by the government and the developer really can have a level playing field when they compete against each other and make the project with a viable team. Also the effect of the scaling up has led to a tariff war to an extent or even the, as the volumes have been increasing, the tariffs have reduced drastically. Today what has happened is the grid parity has reached almost in most of the states as far as uh, ground mounted systems are concerned with the larger scales of or the volumes which have been built up. Uh, even if you see the uh, industrial sites or the commercial uh, places, the tariffs as well as the grid parity has reached almost all the states. So adapting solar uh, is no more something different. Uh, there is an economic feasibility. There are multiple reasons why somebody should invest. The business models have also changed. Today companies have come where they can ready to invest. Even the user need not invest money into it. and. That is also another pain point which has been taken over to hedge the technology risk rather than upfront investing and then trying to adjust the result and see that my savings are acquisite to whatever the internal returns I'm promising to my management. Tomorrow somebody is ready to take the risk, take over the plant, invest into it and only sell you the energy. That is wonderful thing. But over and above, if you see the way Indian sector is moving, uh, also it creates a lot of question mark. Today with the, the kind of uh, tariff war which is happening, how many of the companies will be really able to sustain this kind of tariff war? How long we can continue bidding at a low prices? And when we bid for such a low prices, what kind of quality will be maintained while I do the installation? And whether this, this issues can get sorted out in the near future is a big challenge for all of us to see how we move forward. This really puts a question mark on sustainability because today we have a huge uh, goal to achieve more than 100 gigawatt but even within first 12 to 15 gigawatt we are trying to we are almost at the place where we are losing the momentum because of the aggressive bidding the predictability of installation is going down the rate at which the tenders come and go like six months there is nothing and suddenly in the spurt of moment there are four to five big tenders where there is a huge rush for everybody to pick up the projects whichever are available. So these are really creating a question marks on sustainability. The reason of rooftop growing up is also because of the tariff in most of the states where rooftop today is becoming an attractive proposition. But there are also multiple limitations and challenges. 
like what even Mr. Colonel uh, mentioned about it. Net metering is the biggest challenge in most of the states. The good part is that most of the states have a policy now in place, which was not there two years back. Uh, but the policy also has several limitations. You are not allowed to go beyond a megawatt, and most of the industries would like to adopt the net metering so that on the week or weekend days or the days when they don't work, they don't want to lose on to the energy which is being generated and they should be able to bank it with the net metering. But the moment net metering comes into the picture, the size gets limited to a megawatt uh, that severely puts the restriction. Take a case in place like Pune, with so much amount of industrial belt in and around, even if you just look around the size of the roofs of these industries, average there are a couple of industries who can take five to six megawatt because of the size of the industry, the size of their roof and the type of the connections what they have. But the limitation is because of the net metering, they cannot go beyond that. The average time taken for approvals on the net metering in various states is ranges between anything between three months to six months. And the customer has to wait for till that time, putting it into a possibility that he will keep losing the generation the day his loads are less, losing the generation the days uh, he is not operating at all. So sustainability is a, definitely a question. All the time pressure, price pressure is really also taking a toll onto the quality. And today, a couple of brown assets of we see and analyze, uh, probably Abhay and Dhananjay and many of them are seeing into the industry. The standards at which the plants are getting built up are uh, definitely a question mark. And when we are looking at a life of such a plants to sustain for 25 years, uh, the quality is the most important thing, no doubt about it. And any compromise on that is going to be a problem in terms of generation in coming years and as well as denting the confidence of the investors, which may not be very good for the sector to prosper in coming years. Most important, I think, so all our panelists spoke about services, and that is the most important part because the work half is done only when you install or engineer a good system, design a good system, and install with the good components. But in case if you are unable to take care of the system, for next 25 years, you are not going to get the expected results. And services is the most important, but widely neglected portion in India, actually. And they can see, if you move around the country, majority of the plants are in the problem because they are not serviced regularly. You can see unclean panels. You can see the cables dangling all over the places. We don't know at what efficiency these plants are really operating. Unfortunately or fortunately, we had a couple of chances to do the asset uh, I would say study of a couple of plants uh, as a due diligence for some of the private equity firms. And we were surprised to see the results, the degradations of the modules, the quality of the workmanship and the plant performances are really creating a scary picture. And I hope it doesn't lead to another NPAs uh, like what we have seen it in the coal industry. So that's all from my side as far as topic is concerned. Just to give you brief about uh, my company, Enapak. Uh, we are headquartered in Hamburg, a German company involved into the business of uh, solar IPP as the major business. We also do EPC as well as an asset management. We are the second largest investor for solar in Europe, uh, active in 20 different odd countries and done more than 265 projects worldwide. Uh, overall, our size, we have done a two gigawatt of grid connections only on solar. Out of that, 1.1 gigawatt are our own assets. We are operating 1.4 gigawatt, which means 300 megawatt assets are being operated for the third party uh, outside our own asset base. Uh, in India, we have started three years back, uh, slightly more than three years back. Uh, we have done 67 megawatt of installations by now. These are the name of some of the marquee customers. The good point to know that today when I'm talking to you in Pune, I have already four customers who have uh, adopted our solution, uh, key customers like Atlas Copco, uh, Rene Shaw, Kaiser Compressor, as well as Aremo. Uh, all of these are industrial rooftop installations in the range of 500 kilowatt to a megawatt. That's all from my side, and uh, I would request Brinder to say a few words before we go on to the question and answer session. Yeah.